Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Norman Fang, and today's podcast topic is Pafiopedium, uh, Rothschild Darwinium, which is right here, and the growing of the hybrid also. And we, Jeff, I don't think we've done a similar uh, one before last year, but uh, it never gets at all. I think we last we had a better uh, audio system this year. And this year's Ashrip is the best Pafiopedium uh, Rothschild Dairy in uh, season I have uh, in years. And uh, Pafiopedium Pafio, Rothschild Dairy in uh, the common name is called the Kin of the Lily Sepher Orchid, and they're right here. And the, this band can be rich as big, as wide as a uh, 35 centimeter. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is one of my uh, prize print. I'm going to show it to you. This is a very nice. Uh, it's a first bloom seeding. Actually, it's a second bloom seeding. Uh, the first bloom, the first one, first bloom was from last year. I think we, this might be the one I was shown before. Then in the center. And then this is the second year, second in the flower, and the plant like this from flask, from, from the bottle, from the baby, to this side, as we're speaking today, uh, it's about almost 10 years old. So this is why when you buy raw child dairy in them, whether at the nursery, uh, on eBay, uh, and it's any, any platform, only buy this type of orchid from a very good source of vendor. I don't care if the per person might be have a uh, uh, good review. Okay, review is you know doesn't mean that have particular print. Uh, there's a lot of flaws uh, that some of my customers have uh, got taken advantage of before. Uh, this kind of lily uh, pafiopedium take five seven years. Even if you buy a baby print, okay. I send customers send me photograph for reference that five to six inches and the, the seller claim to be boom inside. It's not, okay. That is just uh, what I call a very German, uh, a very, very baby uh, seeding. Uh, this is why, and it takes a long time for people to find out whether you're getting the true Rothschild dairy or not. So you always want to buy from a legitimate uh, a vendor. Uh, the, the company been been around for uh, a long time. You know, my good friend Sam Sui in, in, in Illinois, he's got a lot of path. You know, Okizong, uh, I'm unfortunately no longer in business. They were a good source of the raw chart they ran them. And just do your research. If you want to spend the money on going puffy pet and raw chart they ran them, do your research. And the second thing is, always buy from the pedigree of a water, a water parent. Okay, uh, there are some earlier, the FCC AOS by Charles Z and Borneo. Okay, those are from the 70s, and those are actually in today's standard. Uh, they're not even compared to today's uh, modern Rothschild Dairyism. Uh, the earlier Rothschild Dairyism uh, uh, actually was first artificial propagated is by a gentleman named uh, Norris Paul of the Orchid House in Central uh, California. And that was when I was in the 80s. I was in, high, I was in uh, college and that was always when the first Draw chart area available uh, as an artificial propagated city is a very, very sensation because uh, you cannot get it from the wild anymore. No, no, we should get it from the wild. Uh, they were used to sell them by the inch. And you know, this is true. Back in the 80s, uh, uh, remember the double burger might be just 99 cents? It's $10 per inch. So they, they sell by the least spend, okay? So this is why Rothschild Dairy Inn is a slow grower. If anybody wants to sell you a Rothschild Dairy Inn this big today for $25, wrong. It's, it's a scam. It's not going to be it. 
because it doesn't pay a tech this big, okay, a foot, a bit a foot. It might be take about three to four years. Okay, it's not going. That's just my like my mentor uh, from the old Stuart Orchid, uh, Ernest Hennington. He all like one of the good, most best advice he gave Norman is, uh, if anybody offer you really really inexpensive or you know orchid for for you, the first thing you ask is what's wrong. This is either be something wrong. Uh, it could be the print uh, in in Catalina business. We we call it the mute, never flower, never go the flower, or it, the print may have all kind of problems. So this is why you always buy on the Russia dairy. Always buy a uh, big print. You know, even on the website, uh, if if the the seller didn't tell you the least spend, take the time to email the person, or if you found the eBay or Etsy, if you had that. Ask the vendor, you know, what's the least spend. Uh, and, and better yet, you know, you want to buy from, uh, never buy them from overseas, okay, because by the time they bury it, send it to you, uh, to the USPS mail, uh, the survival rate is almost not at your advantage, okay. Pathopedium, they have a root, very, very distinct root system versus the Phenonopsis. Phenonopsis, the root system, you know, everybody knows Phenonopsis. The very succulent crump. Pathopedium has root hair, and the hair do not like to dry out in transit. That's why when we, when we repot them, we want to do ASAP. Uh, once the root hair dry out, it's very, very, very hard to get it started over and again, okay? So, this that goes with the, the, the raw child there. How are we doing so far? Another nice thing about raw child therium is they usually flower late versus some of the earlier uh, single flower one. And raw child therium usually flower for me uh, about this year is a bit later because we, we have so much uh, rain this year in Southern California. But usually about uh, East, after Easter and it, it comes in between Easter and Mother's Day, uh, it can go as late as June or July for uh, uh, for uh, Fourth of July. So it's a very very diverse uh, uh, pop seeding population. Most of this because the pathophyton do not do it by clone. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, uh, so they have a lot of variation, and you always want to buy them from the a water parent, like a, a pedigree. You know, uh, Jeff. Breed, uh, used to breed uh, golden retriever, okay. Uh, they are legitimate breeder, for example. They know how to handle the plant. When you're gonna take the time, five to seven year, for me anyway, to breed and grow a, a, a seeding population, I want to make sure the parents are from preferably modern uh, water parent, okay. so. Uh, we have the, this one here. Uh, we the there's a two mo very best FCC is uh, the one from England, the Eric Young Foundation, uh, and also there's one from Orchid Song, the California strain. So if you type in Rochester Dairy uh, or even the uh, OTH on my website, you'll pull down anything that we we have. Uh, as far as the, the parent is a rough and the hybrid, there's a lot. That, so make sure if the, the, if the label says FCC, that means first cross certificate dash AOS, that means American Orchid Society, or AM, award of merit, that almost that's silver. Okay, so don't make, make sure uh, if you buy them, preferably buy them with the award of parent first. Then the second day, uh, Read the description. Most of the, the uh, most of the professional we are uh, hybridizer will take the time to write the description on the parents and the cultivar they use. Uh, if sometimes if the the cultivar did not have a wall, that doesn't mean it's not good because you know a lot of time uh, for example for example raw they read them. They might busy carry the seed pot 
uh, and uh, for the for the Roth, the CPA can be minimum nine to twelve months, sometimes even fourteen months uh, for the C capture uh, capsule to mature. So they are always busy with the, uh, carrying the CPA. So for a lot of breeder, they showing for a war. It totally is not their priority. So that is a different. Uh, so buying the uh, let me show you all the so we show all the, the rough okay so a lot of time we started with just one single fan and this is a perfect example of a rough fan okay this is the first time they flower okay and this is a seven years old fan okay they are not going to flower until they get to maturity okay so the, and they always flow from the center of the fan so a lot of time you want to make sure the water doesn't collect collect in the center or the crown a lot of time that might be cause the crown rot so if you go in outdoor in florida i do have a lot uh, of several of my good customer who grow them outdoors excuse me uh, they go right underneath the vanda. So vanda love to have misting flower. They love that. But as soon as they starting to have the spiking, move it away from the or your automatic water sprinkler head system because the water is got too much water. So always move it away from your area. Put it under the gutter uh, of your house. Or better yet, uh, you can even put it out in so next to the bright window uh the perfect pedium raja and actually can really grow in nicely indoor under the light especially jeff new light put it next to with your catalia this is a few perfect pedium they actually can treat it go in the same light condition like the catalia they love the bright light okay so First broom on the raw child dairyenum usually about give you two or three flower, and that's very normal because hey, hello, you know they just they, this is not their first broom. They get better with age, so and then at the same time as well they as they flowering, uh, you always well anyway. But on the good parents anyway, on the good pedigree, they always gonna see the new girl getting ready. At the same time, you know, Russia Tenorin is a, a few species that actually do this kind of uh, uh, phenomenon of uh, physiology. So then this grow from here, okay, because the print is mature now, they're going to take the whole year to give you the, the new fan this year. And that is going to be flower from this new fan for next year. Okay, so this is why it's so important to buy a, a maturity. You know, and we usually will tell them, tell that you know, you got to, up to from frost. This is seven years to flower. So anything that's smaller than this, uh, is not going to be flower size. So anybody tell you that four to six inches is a flowering size? No, that's that's a scam. I'm sorry for the term, but it is true. This is why I'm doing this podcast today because a lot of time, uh, people don't have a chance to see. Usually, so many raw child dairy in bloom sometimes hard to tell by the picture okay picture doesn't show you how big they are but this is really give you the impact you know having the raw child dairy next to you and look at the leaf and this is actually uh grow better with uh they get better with age that's just like us you know uh this is that like eight years old so they flower this year it's so bigger of course that we use normal soaky food and the mega dry just that like all every other orchid they got three the same thing look how vigorous they already have two fans getting ready for next year and this one here i don't need to repot them okay it's will be okay to be in the same pot but next year it's going to be two stock okay ne next year this time of the year and i'm gonna and i'm so what about any problem insect or disease we associate with perfect pedium luckily 
luckily, Vacha de Rene does not have that much insect problem. Okay, mite do not like them because it is succulent, leathery, is not tasty, like the Phalaenopsis, some of the uh, Bernina of Alicia type. Uh, the, a few insects might attack them, it's possible. Minibot, uh, minibot might hide underneath here. If the water stays overnight, it's moisture. You know how minibot love moisture. Uh, or occasionally, uh, might, they might hide on behind here because this is usually when we are, when the pepperfetin is spiking, when we spray pesticide, we are very, very careful not to spray the flower spike So because it might, it might brush it. Okay, so what about if you look at this one here? It's a Rocha de Rinum, and it's, the first flower is gone, and how come this one is so short? Uh, the reason this one here is so short is, I mean, it's not genetic, okay? This is a, a, one of the things about Rocha de, de Rinum, when they are uh, in spike, they love a lot of water. Uh, in fact, if I'm gonna be gone, and uh, my area, for my stock plant, like nobody, I personally hang water all my plant, the, the one for breeding plant. Uh, so I will make sure, you know, even if I'm gonna be gone for two weeks to Asia, I will always make sure I put a saucer and it's okay. It's okay when they are in spiking, they let them sit in the water, okay? For a couple of weeks, it's not gonna kill them because they love water. And this is the perfect case of this is the second year flower. Okay, now I'm kind of disappointed that they, they give me this kind of trouble. Uh, this is a previous flower. This is the case when they are spiking and maybe the plant got too shallow by another plant in the front, of, so they, they did not get enough light when it's spiking. And also the majority is they did not get proper water. So the plant, the spiking are kind of stuck and Dwarf. So, and being so low on here, uh, when you do water them, the pouch will collect water. So, you don't want to let the water collect in the pouch because that way uh, they'll get rotted. So, actually, the first flower actually uh, just finish. Uh, so, what I'm so what what you do with like this for me anyway? This is the. I usually, uh, with the Pafipedium, I have a box, and Jeff saw me earlier. This all been framed, and so I can time to cool off. So I start with a, a clean scissor, and I'm just gonna cut this off, okay? Because I don't wanna build the energy, because this is one of the very nice, look how big the dorsal, look at the stale, okay. Uh, I can leave it there for another let it flower for two months or more, but but I want to save the energy. So the plant have this new shoot coming up, okay? So I want all the energy to spend on the new shoot because our summers is only in California, well, a good summer light anyway, it's only about six months. Let's say if I let it flower for two months until that July or even August, Okay, half of the energy is spent on the flower, half of the energy probably going on the leaf. Maybe more, maybe less. No, I, I want to have all the energy for next year. So that way that can take advantage of all the maximum light. We have nine right nine now, okay? For six, minimum six months of growth. And this is the situation we have we, when we go under light, we are not under light, going na under natural light. But if you are under the going under the light, you don't have the problem. This is why I actually, uh, if I always say this, if I'm start my new nursery again, or have another new greenhouse set up, I will put in some of the newest and latest LED light. And the latest LED light, if, if you've been using Jeff light, they are actually very cool. It doesn't build up the heat you use less energy and maximize the growth length. And you can control 12 hours of length a year. So a lot of this, that's why I said multi-floor, Pafipedium is actually very good. 
you actually can grow faster than those of us in the greenhouse. Okay, so it does, so this is why another reason that is very popular now on the Rothschild Arena or any of the multi-floor because the better and newer generation of LED light uh, is on the market now. So now I can use this as a cut flower. I'm going to share with Jeff and I can take it to and, and the fresh cut taffy pattern is going to last minimum four to six weeks. Okay, you can use it as a, Jeff, you can use it, if you go into a wedding, you can use it for bone air. You'll be talking the tongue. <laughs> okay, so, and then, don't worry about the repotting. I will, we're going to uh, <laughs> put it on your hair. Yeah, put it on your head. You're gonna, we're going to do a, a segment, uh, one podcast segment, just nothing but repotting, multi-floor, pepipedium, and also dividing them, okay? Here's another example of Rothschild Arianum. Okay, it's one of the, this is one of the earlier one. Okay, so once the, the scissors has been used, I don't, make sure you don't put it back to the same one because this has been cleaned. So put it aside. I'm gonna just, just use another new one that's been uh, cooled off. This is another one has been boomed. This is about three, th th the third flower. And this is one of the earlier one that flower for Valentine's Day. And look at how this new grow is coming up. Okay, so I'm gonna save the energy on this one here, and Jeff can have the flower later. And look at all this. Okay, so the, uh, then I'm gonna do an inspection. So, so this is the older leaf, and that's okay. They are seven years old. And sometimes in, in, in planting or removing the orchid, uh, they, got, they might get crash or got physical damage. All you have to do, uh, I'm gonna, just cut this off with a clean frame razor blade, and I'm going to set it aside because uh, I'm not going to do the repotting just for one plant. So what I usually do uh, is getting all the, the one need to be repotted on the multiple in the air, one area, and we do what, everything on the weekend. So this, so I'm going to put this aside. So this is partially need to be repotted. I can tell by the leaf uh, is the polymedia, probably very, very old and getting too much. And actually, you'd be surprised. Rocha Derridum love to grow in moss. This is 100% pink moss. So I can, because our weather here is dry, so I can grow them in the moss. And also my water here is organized. The cost. It's very good through system. And there's another thing about the, the path. You know, sometimes we get an email from a customer to Karen. And he said, you sent me a bad path. Lady Zipper, the, the root is so bad, they're all brown. Well, not everything has to be white and plump and juicy, like Phenonopsis. This is the color of the Pathopedium, Racha de Rien. They're gonna be brown like this. So this is the color, so, so the brand, don't brand. The grower, the, okay, this is the, this is God made in this way, so don't ask me why. So this is a good candidate. Okay, it root, it's actually, this is what we call root bond, no more space, and it's not putting any new side root. So this is a good candidate. If I don't repot it this year, uh, it can, it's really, uh, it does not serve the plant well for all the new growth. And this is actually very good. I, I should have divided, uh, I could have divided them earlier, but I want to save this for today's segment. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. And so we're gonna do, uh, uh, this will be a good candidate for not just repotting, but also for dividing, okay? Here's another good example of got underwater, see? And uh, this actually grow in the area have a lot of light, ha have a lot of the plant, so it got overshadowed. And so the plant actually searching for light and also did not got water enough, so that's okay. So you can actually, uh, 
And this is also the one I say saw. When the Jamie saw, see something that he saw, I mean, don't touch it. <laughs> it's sort of Norman. Uh, this is, and I, a lot of time we do that to, to observe the plant for the second year. And this is the one from last year. So I'm gonna, I should do a trimming. Let me get the news. The old stock, cut them off. And if the older stock with this, and I'm not even going to even bother to, to cut them out. This is not a disease. This is for very, very naturally for the Rothschild arena. Uh, we get this, you know, you know I, I was having, my, look at my dad, he's 85, and he, this is what we call the age spa. So the, in the physiology of the plant, okay. Uh, instead of cutting them, I don't want the risk of possible infection. So I'm just gonna let them die back naturally. Naturally, the word is naturally. Uh, so because in the process, they're gonna send back the energy back to the, the, the plant. And it actually have a nice new growth coming up. And I'm actually do not, I for, you know, I forgot what it looks like. So I'm actually not gonna cut the spike off. I'm gonna let them uh, flower. But I'm gonna actually prop the spike better. And that's it. Uh, when at this early stage, you don't want the over stage. You, you don't also, if you do it like this, the flower can be upside down. So just let them follow whatever direction they have already. And, but I do will cut off this area here because this is from the, this current year grow. And this is another candidate should be and need to be repotted. So, and so this is actually the symptom from the root is telling you, I don't like the salt build up in the root system. So the plant is communicating you. So I'm actually gonna cut them off, trim them off before they do any more. And this is also another good candidate to do what we call extra watering to leach out the salt. Obviously, the salt had built up in here. That's why you get the tip mark. That's from the leak, uh, the salt built up. Okay. Obviously, the, when we have so many plants, uh, it's, it's okay to have one plant, uh, not that perfect. Okay, well, okay. So, what about the hybrid? We do have a lot of hybrid uh, on Rothschild Dairy One of the, uh, the most famous hybrid and the easiest one to grow is called Pafipedin Sensuitin. And Sensuitin is the primary hybrid between the Roth and the Pafipedin Philippinensis. And this is actually, if you never grow Pafipedin, uh, the multi-floral. Sensuitin is the, what I call the entry label because Pafipedin Sensuitin uh, is, is a very robust grower. Uh, it's from the Philippines, very similar area than, than the uh, us, the Fernanasa uh, Philippinensis, Fernanasa Shuriana. Okay, so these are the Fernanasa uh, Shuriana. Uh, so they are actually very, very easy can, and they actually can grow along the Fernanasa's. So Sensuitin is the one primary to have. And you can actually find us on the website on this one here. Uh, one of the first orchid judging I ever have in Taiwan is 1997. And we went in there and we were expecting to see a lot of analysis wrong. There was, there was like two row of Sensuitin and each one in the six inch part like that. And every one of them had the multiple growth. This is how big is the sensuitin. Look at it. The first one just opened. Right? You already had two new growth coming up for next year. In the six inch pot, they all had minimum six spikes on them. So this is why I say sensuitin is a very good entry level uh, when you go wanting to get into multi floor. And the, the it also the, we joke about this. This I'll show the it's a poor man. It's a poor man's uh, 
uh, multi-floor compared to the rough. So uh, if you never go, if you never go any of the multi-floor or rush out any before, always use Sensuitan as a test model. You know, if you can, and then if you can go Sensuitan and flower them well, you can flower any of the multi-floor. Okay. Here's another one. Okay, here's another one of the rough that I'm gonna cut off. Uh, it's getting tired. This is actually from the physical damage. When the, the path, they are they just are sending Rihanna. When they are still expanding, okay? Uh, and we have so many print. Sometimes the, by rubbing it, it damaged the apical growing tips that did. So they, the growing tip here has been damaged. So they stopped growing, okay? Not only that, we also wrap it up like this, so it, we want to make sure that we cut it off. So at this stage, it's a very nice one. Look at how big the dorsal sepal. And uh, this is actually a, a, a water bowl. Uh, and look how, pens, how thick the, the stem. This is a pencil thick, the stem. So I'm going to say, uh, cut this off. Boy, Nikki's gonna have a lot of path for, for the house today. This is for Nikki. Okay. We're gonna look this up. And we're gonna do it, uh, this will be saving here for the, another new segment, okay? The fun part about the, the hybrid that I really like, that this is, Jeff, can we see the back of the flower here? See, this is the this is Lely Roth. Or oh, actually, this is Stonii, a species called Stonii from Indonesia. In, in, uh, Indonesia have is a is an island country, had thousands of islands. So we don't know which island they come from. But anyway, the Stonii is one of the uh, multi floral species from the from the Philippines. Uh, and uh, you know the Sandariana is also from the Philippines. Rothschild Sandariana is also from the Philippines, but we they might from different islands. So this is actually the distinct character of the stony eye. And if, I love stony eye, but if, if you see from the back, the front, Jeff, look how interesting the, the dorsal. It got a beautiful uh, the white chocolate cream color and really waxy. And the stony eye also add the very, very nice, rich raspberry pinkish on the pouch and the Again. Lynn is having a heart attack. Huh? Lynn is having a heart attack. She's Lynn asking, what? No, Lynn. Uh, oh, Lynn. Booth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, asking yeah. you not to cut anymore because <laughs> you, you're going to put her in the hospital. <laughs> she can't take it. I, I do it with a uh, tender loving care, you know, looking for the long run. <laughs> anyway, but this is actually Lady Rough hybrid. And, and she wants to contact you after because she's interested in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't cut anymore until she... <laughs> gets to talk to you okay. anyhow. Good. So this is uh, Lynn. Uh, Lynn is one of dear friends. Uh, she is one of the best. And her and her husband used to own an uh, OK company called uh, uh, Lab. Lynn, help me up here. I have a senior moment here. Antec Lab. You know, for, for lots of you in the East Coast, Antec Lab is actually the follow us just as good. We, you know, the Antec Lab is what we call the East Coast of Orkizong. Orkizong is the West Coast, and Antec Lab is the East Coast. So if Lynn like it, you know how good it is. And one of Lynn's favorite hybrid, primary hybrid is Lady Isabel. And Lady Isabel is Stony Eye by Rothschild de Rienen. So and this one here is Johanna Burhar. And Johanna Burhar is Adaptum by Roth. So this is actually only three primary, only three species. So it had the beautiful adoptum. And I, I like the way the foliage present itself, you know. You can tell, I, we, well, we go to very bright light, you know. Uh, I, I, by, the, by the fall, we get a maximum light almost like Catalina. In fact, sometimes I actually move some of this to the Catalina greenhouse maximum light, you know, because in the winter time, especially this year, 
with so much rain in California, my path house is dark and I cannot get in too much light because I then will, my Maori I type, the shady one will suffer. So I, I should take the effort to mow up more this out of the Carrera house, out of the path house and move it to the Carrera house. Just give it a try. But I make sure, I make sure I do not mix the feeding and I also do not mix the mega dry spray. Because uh, Jeff, I saw, I showed Jeff one of my, I even moved some of the uh, compressed parfipedium to the Catalina house as a trial. But I made sure I use mega dry, okay, religiously. And I'll be done. The mega dry really helped the perk up the, the leaf and the uh, compressed path actually growing in the Catalina house next to Lady of, uh, Lady of Preparata for about three months, but I'm gonna move them back to Shady now. But so this is why uh, Mega Dry is so sensational. It's not just for everything. It's just when the plant needs something, they need the, they were stress, they're gonna help them to produce more or the, I don't, in this case, uh, oxen, you know, because oxen is in the winter, uh, springtime for the, uh, for the grow leaf. And look at the leaf. That's why they produce more wax on the foliage. So the, the plant will be sustained to be uh, more heat and also disease resistant. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't wax them. You know, they just run out of the mill. Look at, look at all this path. Okay. And that natural wax is what they have in the wild. Guess who spray fungicide on them in the rainforest of Indonesia? Nobody but they need the natural wax on them, okay? This is why I, I always say less is more because you know, we don't use fungicide here. But this is why occasionally I had to cut off the spot, but that's okay because a lot of the nursery in this day, you know, myself included when I was in school, you know, we were taught, I call it brainwash. Uh -huh. You know, you do ponsalia, you know. But when you stick the cutting, you start using Bentley, Ben Rob, there's a root cooper recipe of what to use. By the time the end of the four months, do you know how much fungicide and pesticide is on that ponsalia, in that plant? And then people are bringing it into the house. <laughs> okay, uh, and so this is why I don't usually, uh, don't like to mix a lot of the house plant with the, with the, uh, the plant. The plant, if you go the plant that way, okay, the plant is going to be like, okay, it has so much stuff, uh, 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 a drug on me. There's no, they don't need to produce their own natural immune system. Okay, so that's not the healthy way to grow the plant, and especially growing the multi -floral. So I may be the odd one, but hey, I save a lot of money the fungicide now on the market is like three times or four times the price before COVID. It's not funny. It's like a little, a little thing jar like this, uh, half a gallon, three, four hundred dollars for, for fungicide. Anyway, so this is why, so why not go back to, this is why I love to go to uh, observe some of the, go to South America to get some of the, uh, I'm going to go to Penang, uh, August. That's where the banana come from. I'm going to give a speech, uh, I'll give a program in the Penang Botanic Garden. So I'm looking forward to see some of the natural uh, Valencia of Benina and all some of the Malaysia species from the wild. They've been in the Botanic Garden. You actually should observe how they grow and nobody spray fungicide on them in the wild because they do have a natural immune system. So let's help them. Let's go back to the, the drawing board, okay? Yes, I might be produced, might take me longer, a one or two years longer, but when the plant go to your house, that's good because the plant does not have the, 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 the been over spoiled by all this fungicide. Then nobody can use all kind of fancy fungicide that you need a, a degree or a license applicator, by myself included, to buy that kind of stuff. You cannot buy some of those fungicide uh, over the counter, all right? So this is how it goes. So this is the hybrid. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna break more uh, 
Lynn's heart. And this is not a beautiful one. This is Adopted Philip by Rachel Theriadin, one of the new FCC from, uh, from my good uh, my cousin, I call her cousin, James Fang. She got an FCC AOS in Hawaii. But to get an FCC in Hawaii is very, very difficult. So uh, again, there's a lot of new trend using the uh, adoptum uh, under species for the color. Uh, look at the color on this one. This is actually very good. Uh, uh, I, I was, we, there's a one enter by Wu Tai, and he had like three flowers and one bud. He got an AM. This is a very, this is actually awardable. Uh, not bad for first boom. And this is a younger leaf, this is an older leaf, and naturally yellow because we, I call it a lot of light. Okay, so this is nice. So they are getting better because I think the multi floor is getting more affordable in my book. Uh, you, can, you can buy a booming size for less than a price of the, of really, uh, the good awarded novelty, not big, less than $100. And then for seven, eight years, it's worth it. I will give you the money to the grower. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'm not going to cut this one. Look at how beautiful this dwarf. But I, I damaged the petal, <laughs> so it cannot be shown for judging. <laughs> but look at this. A good dwarf. I don't, you don't, the nice thing about the rough, you don't even need to spike it. Okay. I've got a new group coming up. And so once, once the, four, uh, when you finish the four inch pot, uh, this one here, I probably, you can actually slowly gradually go to the four inch and the five inch. But for raw shot, they read them. They really like to have a bigger, more root area. And I, I like to do the six inch pot because the leaf is big and wide. So if you, have space, you know, give some space to at least one Rothschilderian or Rothschilderian hybrid, okay? And another wonderful, uh, we do have a lot of this. Uh, one of my favorite multi floor hybrid is, of course, my mentor in PATH, Harold Cooperwood. And this is Harold Cooperwood, is with Rothschilderian, crossed with the Chinese, the single flower species called Mialoponensis, and this is the first flower. Yes, I'm sorry, this is the second flower. You have previous flower from here. Okay, and this is second broom, and I have several awards, I think at least one or two awards on the on Harold Cooperwood. This is not the biggest or the widest one. Uh, you can see the influence on Rochelle Denrianum. And the foliage is, is a gold mine. The foliage is the Meloponensis. And this one here is actually, for me, it's a lot easier to flower this primary hybrid than the Meloponensis itself. Because the Meloponensis is a species from Yunnan, China. They usually like to have a root drop below 50, below 50 at night for a couple of weeks to flower. So this is why you, we usually throw the uh, Maniacum, Mialoponensis, outdoor in the winter time. And if we let it down to 35 degrees, no problem. They love that stress. That stress is needed for the change of physiology of the plant. And then once they take it outside, inside, then we make sure you have mega thrive on them because they will need more mega thrive enzyme will help them to produce more of the cytokinins enzyme naturally. So this is Hale Cooperwood. Okay. Don't worry about the number. All you have to go to the website and the little search box and just type in R-O-T-H if you don't know the, the spell, the, the full name. Uh, it will bring out anything with uh, raw child generating hybrid. And here's another good hybrid. There's a three hybrid. And this is all from, it's called Hilo Black Eagle. It's two different combinations of Hilo. This is why the hybrid is so unique. It's like buying lottery. But if you buy in front of good parents, you have a better luck. Hilo Black Eagle. Here's another Hilo Black Eagle. They all first from seeding. 
Hero Black Eagle. I think this is one of the best successful uh, modern Ralph hybrid. And look at it, it's faster. It's about five years old only. Uh, here's another oh, different one. Oh, Hero Black Eagle. Okay, so check this out. They all the same hybrid, but using different combination. But you see, so you can tell that the influence on the uh, adoptum in this breeding. Remember the adoptum hybrid we have earlier, like this. Okay, so look at the size on this. This one get really big. Maybe because the, it's only had one flower, but this is probably the, the one, really the best one I'm gonna keep. If not, if Lin probably wanna buy this one, Lin, this is the keeper. Uh, but I, but that, that doesn't mean the other one's not good. I actually like some of, I actually like this one too. This have the, the inference from the Rothschild area. In. But they always, the every one of them are distinct. You see here? Okay, I'm probably going to uh, release this for Jamie, okay, uh, if I don't decide to keep any one of this, okay. So, but this is fun. This is why you want to buy uh, CD, but uh, if you, anything that I offer at my website, hey, hello, this, this pay for my advertisement here, uh, at, at my company, we will say, when we say mature side, it's truly mature side. Uh, we will put down the leaf, and you can always email Karen. Uh, but I usually will put in the note, sometimes say, well, this is five years old seeding, or the, the lease span. But lease span sometimes can be misleading, okay? The lease span, because if you, if I want to grow them really lease span, there's a trick to it. Grow them really shady, dark, and then put in, pump in a lot of fertilizer with high nitrogen. You can stretch the leaf, but you can have a lease span this big, but the plant is weak weak so that's what the, the, the your vendor source is very important you know when we we, we don't we're not here to, to get our customer we want to make sure our customer have good experience you always buy something from a good vendor that you have work good working relationship work with before and you know where to live you know where to come from there's an address we do have an address or the website and a company on every the back of the label a lot of the time when you buy something from off the eBay, you don't, by the end of five years, you don't know where, they go, where you buy it from, okay? Donna Richards is asking about cold weather tolerance on these. Can you explain temperature range? Russia, they're them. A lot of people thought, oh, they're from Indonesia. It gotta be warm. Uh, no. It's actually where they come from. Interesting enough is they're from, from, they're from, from an island and that did not, on the sea level. You know, Indonesia, the island summer air level can be on high. So they're about at least a thousand or fifteen hundred level. But what I my experience with the rough is because remember last uh, last year we have one of the path greenhouse, the propane heater went off. And because of COVID in 2021, uh, we did not know that the, we, we don't have modern, modern uh, heater anymore. They all made it in Canada. So we waited for almost six months to get our modern uh, unit heater to ship from Canada. And because of COVID, it took forever. By the time we get it, it took another two months to wait for a good... It was into summer. Yes, like to get November, to wait for another uh, uh, certified uh, a good plumber to do the, the hook it up, and because uh, my 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 plumber, you know, the who we will use and we trust it is, to, you know, uh, it was on vacation. So the whole summer, the whole winter, it went down to forty five. Forty five, and this is. Uh, the orchid that you is facing today. It's down to 45, but 
we don't water them. You don't, when, the, the, when the plant that call, you water less because they don't need that much water. But we also make sure that maximum light, we open all the, all the shade curtain inside, we make sure they are properly light. Okay, what you don't want to have is really cold and dark and the plant do not have the light. Remember light help the chlorophyll make energy on the plant, okay? So when, uh, when you do have a cold spill, okay, make sure you don't want to water and make sure the plant also have optimum light, as much light as possible that you don't burn the plant because the plant, the light help the plant build energy for themselves. So you don't have, I did not have experience any cold damage at all. And the feeding and the mega drive. I told Jeff earlier, I have an area outdoor, right? Outdoor, under the, uh, under the uh, fiberglass. Sometimes I put the raft outdoor. You want to make sure they, they have more light and the low temperature on them. So yes, I, I, my own experience, yes, they can, can go down to 45. They might, at, at one point, they might go below 45, but you know, the, the, the light, the temperature in the greenhouse is gradually go down at night when the sun is here. So they might not be there 45 degree or 40 for 68 hours, but they can, they can be there because let's just make sure the next, next day there's a light on them, the print perk up right away, okay? But this is all the same one that experienced that, that six month of no heater in 2021 during the COVID, okay? And I think that the PATH Rochester is a wonderful addition to your collection or your addition. <laughs> and they grow well. We, and uh, by the time they finish, uh, summertime is the time when they grow the uh, put out new growth and for next year. So if you don't want to cut off the spike, that's fine. Make sure, make sure religiously you feed your orchid nutrient. Okay, if you, if you don't take them, if you, you know, they use a lot of energy and require a lot of feeding when they hang in flower and also in the foliage. So if you don't want to cut them off, make sure, mark it on your calendar, use Norman's Optimum Orchid for Nutrient every two weeks, twice a month, and make a ride because they need on them, okay? So until next week, don't worry about repotting because right now they are in flower. You don't want to touch them anyway, okay? And a lot of them, they don't, they're too short on the flowers, the new shoot to repot in them. Okay, so I'm going to end this, the segment on this, the new hybrid of Hilo Black Eagle. Uh, three species, Rocha, the 